Living Adaptive. The goal is to adapt and thrive despite the adversity you face. If you're going to have to have that little voice inside of you trying to push yourself. I set a vision for myself and now I'm seeing it come to fruition. I'm grateful for losing my leg. There's just some things you must endure in life. You might crash. You might fail. You can find a purpose in your suffering. I'm not special. I just decided that I'm not going to stop. You do everything you possibly can. We want to change the world. I'm going to adapt to it and make it the way it works for me. Take what it is from life that you want and enjoy it. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Living Adaptive. And if you don't know, man, just go to livingadaptive.com. You can get show notes, uh, previous guests, all kinds of good shit there. So go there. But today, we got Ben Hunsinger on. And this is our first time we're doing a video podcast. We usually just do audio podcasts only. So this is going to be really interesting. And Ben, thank you for first being the trial run on this because we do vlog a lot. We do get on the camera a bunch, but we don't get on the camera and do these interviews. So I appreciate you being here, man. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. What an honor to be your first guest, man. Thank you. I'm yeah. here for everybody. Thanks, man. Yeah, we got we got like a ton of shows out, but we just never added video content. We we're always just straight audio straight to the app. So anybody watching now is still going to deploy to the regular app. So you'll be able to see this whole episode, all the good stuff on, or hear this whole episode, all the good stuff there. But you won't get to um, see it through the app. Of course, you'll be seeing it on YouTube and then also we'll throw it out on a Facebook and we'll start with those two. And if it works out, fuck, we'll just go with those. So let's see what we got going. Now, Ben, man, Ben Hunsinger, you make some noise, man. You make a lot of noise in the adaptive community. I've watched a lot of your videos, and so you do a lot of cool shit out there. And what you're most well-known for outside of your own adaptive story is that you're building some shit, man. So what are you doing out there? Right on, man. Yeah, I, uh, I'm building the Spartan Wheel Chariot. And uh, what that is is it's a three-quarter inch conduit ha- handmade wheelchair that I build on an eight acre uh, pecan orchard here in South Georgia. And um, it's 30 pounds. It's got rear suspension. It's got 10 inch by three inch front tires. You can literally roll this thing anywhere through anything. And the best part about it is I'm in this to help people. I'm in school right now, getting my bachelor's in education to be a science teacher. Um, so I make wheelchairs and sell them for 500 bucks because everybody ought to be able to get a wheelchair that they can live an outdoor active lifestyle in. And that's what I'm about. You're kind of a no nonsense dude. You tell it straight, you know, you definitely went out there, put a product out there, but you probably hit a ton of roadblocks to get out there. I mean, making a chair for 500 bucks and this is an off-road chair and I've seen your chair in action, man. And it has rear suspension. Um, and we'll get into that in a second, but like what kind of roadblocks were you hitting along the way? Man. Oh, where do I begin? All right. So 10 years ago, I got paralyzed and I'm a T4 complete para. Mm-hmm. So I don't have any movement, nothing from the chest down. And um, when I first started uh, living in the wheelchair world, I would, I would go out to the river where there was gravel, roots mm-hmm. and rocks. And I would take my dog out there. And um, I was amazed at how, how much my wheelchair was like anywhere you go with front casters, you got to be in a wheelie position. And I thought, man, if I could take what's in the downhill skateboard world, if I could take what's in the mountain bike world and adapt that to a wheelchair, I could really be making some moves out here, staying fit a lot, um, a lot easier. And it'd be a lot more fun to live, live in a wheelchair you can use on, on terrain like that. So I started cutting wheelchairs apart, uh, nuts and bolts, putting them back together. First wheelchair I ever built, um, I took a downhill skateboard axle and put it under the foot plate and flipped it around and was out in the middle of the river, fly fishing, hanging out with my dog and was just living, you know? Yep. Um, and then I started uh, getting into welding and stuff. Um, I bought myself a welder, learned about conduit and, and started hand bending uh, metal to where I could make a frame and not have to use other wheelchairs that I had, I had accumulated. Um, and the point of me doing it from the get go was to be able to make myself something that was rugged that I could live my life in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I figured out a way to do it and it only cost me $200 for all the material. And I've, I've always said there should be a wheelchair like this on the market. So once I figured out how to do it, I'm I'm sticking to it's an affordable price. It's always going to be. And that's what Spartan wheelchairs is about. And I want to help people and that are living with wheelchairs or need them that, you know, can get out there and afford it. 
Now, here's a question for you, man. You talked about your adaptive story. We're going to get back to the chair, but like what happened, man? 10 years ago, what happened? I got in a car wreck. I was going too fast around a turn, flipped the truck a few times, severed the spinal cord. Um, and immediately, man, I was I was hit with this is what's out there. These are, these are the chairs. This is what's available. And I thought, man, this is crazy. You know, we've been to the moon and wheelchairs are like this. You can go to you can go to Walmart and there's a, a mountain bike with full suspension, disc brakes, aesthetics for two hundred dollars. I thought, dude, this is crazy. So I started going to like Georgia Tech. I would hit up all these engineering uh, facilities and fabrication shops and nobody really understood what I was talking about, man. Mm -hmm. Most people that saw a wheelchair just thought, man, either this guy's just another guy in a wheelchair that isn't accepting his plot in life or is mad and is taking it out on everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody could get what I was talking about. And after I would hear people say stuff on my, my journey, like just because other people don't, don't understand your dream, it's all right. It's not their dream. It's your dream. And man, for years I was putting together stuff and um, just trying to, to get with the right people and finally connected one day in college two years ago i went to a competition and won enough money to where i could buy a bulk supply of wheels from spinergy a bulk supply of uh, coil springs all the tools i needed all the welding equipment i needed and a buddy of mine had a shop in his backyard and said you can start building them here and i did it and somebody reached out to me and said we'll build your website for you and from day one man i've been since i kicked off i've built 70 of them since uh, may of last year um and i don't have any plans of stopping man that's a great wheelchair yeah i agree and then i don't think you have any plans of stopping it of course because i've heard you know some of the plans you have in the future but the research man a lot of people i mean you're a rugged dude for sure man you got some neck tats you got the whole thing going fuck man and then but at the same time you're out there hitting the stacks man i mean you're literally out there working with some of the best technical universities and then researching what works best including the rear suspension system which i rarely see and so like seeing what you've got and where you're going is pretty incredible man your mindset though is definitely inventor it's definitely definitely entrepreneur mindset so it's cool to see this because you don't see it a lot in this community and it's kind of really empowering it's something that we just don't get to see much of and i'm sure um, a lot of people have reached back to you a lot of good feedback man for sure but i want to go back a little bit into your recovery because just to help people kind of humanize who you are you're not just this inventor that made this chair you're also a guy that had to go through some tremendous recovery man what was the best stuff that got you through that situation when you were adapting Taking my dog to the river, man. Yeah. I lived about six miles from the Chattahoochee River in Atlanta near the Shepherd Spinal Center. Yo, when I got hurt, I used to push my chair three miles on the sidewalk up to the Shepherd Center to lift weights and then back. And the sidewalks are all broken, beat up. And um, that was, you know, the beginning stages of it, it was all part of a bigger plan to me that I was made to do this. Like, <sighs> Uh, I've always just had a knack for taking stuff apart and putting it back together. Yeah. And I was, um, you know, man, I was, I was not living the, the productive lifestyle I am today back then. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that always kept my mind straight is being able to be physical and get out and exercise. I used to run a lot. I do half marathons, the Peachtree road race before I got hurt. And when I got hurt, I was the same dude. I would get out and just push for miles and miles. And the Chattahoochee River has mountain bike trails all around it. Um, so I would go out there and get my mind clear. Um, I tried to work retail jobs after my accident and um, never really had success with, with staying with something, man. I was, I was a pretty angry guy. Yep. And uh, so anyways, I, I evolved into getting myself back into school and stuck with it. And um, I've always had this passion to be able to make a wheelchair that everybody can use like I do. Um, and there's nothing like to me being able to go out and go for a run and not, not on a paved surface, man. I want to get out in the woods. I like to hunt and fish. And from the get go, I was experiencing the way my wheelchair couldn't keep up with that. It wasn't built for that. And, and, um, dude, I did so much research when I first got hurt on the market. What's out there. 
and there was nobody making a wheelchair that was affordable that had any kind of mechanical advantage to the terrain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I second that. It just, it just evolved to where I finally found all the right pieces and um, threw this thing together, and it's um, it's a beast, man. I love it. Yeah, it's a piece for sure. That rear suspension, though, like when we've talked before, that whole idea of the rear suspension is really cool to hear. Like research shows you need you need to start incorporating it. I was with uh, Travis Strong at Scala Strat two weeks ago, and he had a very, very customized chair. And, of course, there was rear suspension, and you just don't see it. He had a Fox, uh, Fox like uh, Strat system in there. Like it was cool. It was a very customized one. I'm sure extremely expensive, you know? And so, like, the fact that you're making these for 500 or selling these for 500 right now is already probably lowballing yourself because of you know the cost that it takes. But at the same time, the heart, the heart for the community. Uh, because every time I talk to you or every time I see you post, it's an emphasis of like you can get out there and do the shit I'm doing. Like you can go out there and hunt and fish and travel. You know, actually get off road on your own without a support crew pushing your chair or pulling your chair or anything like that. Depending on your what you're adapting to. You know, a lot of people have various um levels of um adaptation when it comes to chair and so like um depending what you can control so it gets really interesting with what you got for sure man and uh i think that's really rad now i gotta jump into this man um i'm sure it gets tough out there competition wants to eat you up and stuff how do you how do you stay driven man how do you stay driven to not listen to the naysayers you know from the get-go man the very first wheelchair i ever posted was after hurricane michael came through Mm-hmm. And what, uh, what year I was that? My, uh, 2015. Mm-hmm. One of my prototypes was sitting out in the front yard and um, it, it survived everything. And I put a post out and there was a lot of guys talking about, wow, oh, look at the weld beads. You know, it's garbage, stuff like that. And I went in on it, man. I said, look, dude, this is a wheelchair that I, I take anywhere. It's if somebody was with me like a film home crew i don't need to validate what it's capable of because i live it like yep. it, if if it wasn't strong and capable i wouldn't be putting this thing out there for people to use um and it it gut checked me real quick that there's always going to be people out there that are there's like 10 different kinds of of cars made everybody chooses what kind of car they want but in the disabled world somebody comes out with something different and all these people want to start talking trash about it and That's i'm like crazy. dude Look at the life that I live with it, man. I go go out on the beach. I go through the mud. I do whatever I want. Um, and I'm trying to help people. And y'all want to talk crap about it? Um, but, you know, I've learned that, that there's going to be people like that. And no matter what, man, I'm always going to have a wheelchair that I know how to build. That if I can get somebody to embrace how much more of a lifestyle they can live with a chair, that's capable of doing the things that they want to do, not bound to what a normal wheelchair is about, man. I think I can change the world. I agree. I got to rewind though. You said something there like, you know, in the auto community, yeah, there's a little bit of shit talk. Like I love Fords. I love Chevy's this, this or that, but there's does definitely seems to be a, almost like a personal level in the adaptive world where like uh, people can't accept that maybe, maybe their chair just doesn't work for another person. Maybe like yours, I see yours as an extremely independent chair in a lot of ways. Like you can do a lot of things with it off-road, of course, but then like there's a lot of maneuverability, lightweightness to it and so forth. And that works for so many others, you know? And like the fact is, is like, we have a we have an issue right now in the adaptive community where we can't like embrace and support each other um, sometimes when it comes to this type of stuff, products and so forth, because there's so many people that got their hand in the motherfucking pot. And so like at the same time, like there's a lot of sway there, man. And like if we can get to a place where like, yeah, that's cool. We can have multiple devices. Competition is great. Remember that people using chairs competition is fucking great. The more competition we got, the better that product gets. And you're out there competing and building this out. And then. I'm biased, man, when an adaptive, you know, a member of the adaptive tribe is building something and innovating something or creating content. I'm in it, man. That's what this is all about. This whole podcast, everything I do, I don't take sponsors. I don't take shit for a reason because I want to promote those to the people that are like maybe smaller, the underdogs and see what they can do, man. And so I love that. I love this about this chair. Yeah, man. It, it, you know, it's been crazy to me since day one. I never really met many other folks that were about building their own chairs. Mm -hmm. And it, it started with me after I was going from DME to DME 
learning what's on the market to to realize, wow, nobody's nobody has taken a wrench and a hammer and sat there and just started forging out their own stuff. And I'm not sure why a lot of people aren't like that. I, I guess it's all just personality stuff to where a lot of people just don't have that. They're not interested in doing it. But, dude, as a community, wheelchairs should not be the price of a car. No. You can go to Walmart and get a mountain bike for 200 bucks. It should no. be the same with a wheelchair. It's the same amount of metal, everything. And these are things that we need every day. Um, so, dude, I'm all about taking it to the limit of what a wheelchair can be. And, that, dude, I'm passionate about it, man. It's my life. Yeah, once you start getting that game where it's, it's just outrageously because you've got a whole team that like overhead that you got to support. I mean, people are not benefiting. So it's really frustrating. I'm going to go further. I'm going to go right into the CPO line of things, orthotics, prosthetics, everything. It's just crazy how much they are right now. And I understand it takes a whole team. And, you know, I have arguments back and forth. I have good friends in the field, very good friends. I'll be on the phone with one uh, really soon. And it's not necessarily anybody's fault. It's just what the market has driven it to at this point. But it kind of sucks because like at the end, there's like end users that I hear that struggle a lot and I have to wait for grant to get the next product and because it's just too expensive on their own dime or maybe you know maybe their level of disability doesn't allow them to work at the same rate as others might be able to and you know it'd be cool i'm not saying like let's get all like socialist in this thing but like at the same time let's have a little bit of sanity in the in the market so um kind of kind of crazy but like i love to see your chair man i love to see it out there on a course you know doing something like that in fact i thought like at some point maybe we could fundraise and get that chair out at spartan race are you gonna are you gonna get out there and race you gonna race in an ocr or anything man all i'm doing is waiting for the opportunity mm -hmm. that there haven't been many races over on my side of america but um you know i've been in school man i've been building these things like crazy since may it's just been non-stop for me um but the day is going to come, man. I'm staying fit. I'm ready, dude. Yeah. I'm ready to show people in the, the whole yeah. racing community what this thing's about, what it'll do. It, yeah. Um, the the think, level of fitness. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Tell me about your fitness, man. What do you do, man? Yo, every day I've got a, a incline bench here. I take 55 pound dumbbells. I do two sets of different workouts every day. I go run for miles every day. That's that's who I am, and that's who I've been since day one. Yeah, that's why I had to make a wheelchair that can keep up with the way I want to live. Yep. And this chair is a straight up animal when it comes to just rolling down a dirt road. Dude, you don't get any kind of drag from those front casters being behind your feet, being small. And I I had to build this thing to where I could use it indoors every day. So this is my only chair. I take and throw it in and out of the back of the jeep. It, you know, I live in an apartment. I use it in school, classes, anywhere I want to go. It's a wheelchair that is capable of being indoors and outdoors, but at the same time, you can take and roll it through an obstacle. Yeah, man. Um, I I want to get back, though, a little bit if we can, because like one thing we're all about is like getting it down to the ground level of the person. And we kind of hit on it a little bit with your story. But I like to ask this question because you've been through a tremendous amount. Like if you think about the adversity you faced 10 years ago all the way to now, man, you've had a lot of time to reflect a lot of time to say like this went down. I created something out of it. I'm trying to make a difference. I'm building something. I'm fighting things to get up there. I'm researching all the time. I'm educating myself. Like I know your story a bit more than most that are going to be listening. In fact, probably a lot more. But the point being is that you have 10 years to reflect, man. And if you could go back to yourself, man, while you were sitting there after you wrecked, after that car fucking flipped around the corner and you're in a hospital and you got the news that things are not going to be different. You got a new normal. What would you say to yourself? <clears throat> man i'm telling you when i when i came to on the hospital bed one of the first memories i had was this was all a part of a bigger plan and um you know when you first get hurt you really don't know what to do next um other than just like put one foot in front of the other F to me physical fitness is so important that from the get-go i was in the weight room I was pushing for long, long distances. I wanted to be strong physically. Um, that anything's possible, man. Anything is possible, no matter what your situation. If you if you put it in gear, you can do it. Okay. And that's that's what um, 
had I embraced that at an earlier age, all, all this would have came about sooner. But I think I had to go through what I had to go through to get to where I'm at. Um, and, you know, I think that's everybody's everybody's life story is um, you go through things that mold you into who you are. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that when I was at the Shepherd Spinal Center, I kind of burned a lot of bridges there because I would go to the uh, the seating clinic and ex- explain how I thought the wheelchair could be so much different. And I remember a therapist one time saying, you know, you're taking it out on, on us. But the way I saw it is you guys are making these cookie cutter wheelchairs, selling them for the four companies that like colors, tie light, uh, top end and um, quickie. You know, those are the four big dudes in the game. And yeah. those are all these therapists are promoting their stuff there. And I'm like, but where's the innovation at? Like where, where, and, but these are all people that are just trying to help people get from point A to point B. And I think a lot of people accept this is just where the wheelchair's at. And for me, I was never, never like that, man. From, for me, from the get go, I was like, all right, how do we put mountain bike tires on this thing? How do I get to where these front casters aren't jamming up on roots every time I go off of the paved service? It's like this is insane there's no way i'm going to be able to live with a wheelchair that isn't capable of having any kind of mechanical advantage off-road yeah. like the anywhere outside of, of a hospital is not a paved smooth surface so what are we doing as a community to make it a reality that we can make wheelchairs better and then i started getting into the whole like well Insurance won't cover this, won't cover that. You need a doctor's prescription to be yeah. seen by your DME. And I thought, man, whoa, hold on. I'm sitting here with a broke wheelchair and you're telling me I need an appointment for somebody to come out to the house and all this. And I thought, no, hold on. I'll just build my own. And that's where it's evolved from is um, being somebody broke on the couch with a broke wheelchair and having this dream of, okay, if one person can make an impact on the world like we've seen so many people do that came before us i can do the same thing hell yeah you and can, it, man. one day at a time i i actually believe in you i think i sent you a message man i i was like i don't know you man but i believe in you i do i believe in you i i, I can know you now but like i didn't know you as much then and like i totally believe you're gonna do some major difference here because uh one of the reasons why is your moxie man like you don't back down from shit and so like that's beautiful and that's something i appreciate i roll with a crew like that you know what i mean that just don't back down to the bullies that have been there before and i love that man and i appreciate that because i and i don't mean just like your competition in wheelchairs or something but like your story of shepherd center and everything else it's like they weren't necessarily bullying but they're also kind of strong arming their viewpoint and to see like you just persevere through that because you could have definitely just sat down and just left it and just said they're right this is where we're going to go this is game this is the this is the game for me now but it wasn't and so like it gets me interested though what what are you going to do in the future man like what where do you see first a chair and then where do you see yourself like where is ben hunsinger going in the future man man i'm going to make a difference impacting kids lives teaching them about science and the great outdoors yeah, yeah. and in my spare time i'm going to be making the baddest wheelchair and selling it for the most affordable price and let the people see, man, that I've got a wheelchair that you can literally go anywhere, anytime. Mm-hmm. It's 30 pounds. It's got suspension where you can be out outdoors all day, every day for 500 bucks. There's, and I hope that other people steal this idea and start making cheap wheelchairs that are badass like mine. And that way, every the whole game changes. And there's not the grit freedom chair. There's not box wheelchairs. There's not two all-terrain wheelchairs made one by Invacare, one by um uh colors like that's it like whoa there should be a huge production facility all over all over the place sending wheelchairs all over the place that have the same technology that mountain bikes do that that should be a couple hundred bucks you know it really doesn't take rocket science to make it happen it just takes somebody with the dream and the passion like i'm doing to change everything man and we're in the time to where you know the ada wasn't even started until 1990 
So we've got, we're at the, the forefront of, of the, we're on the frontier of the whole new movement with prosthetics too. Oh yeah. Nobody yeah. really survived past the Vietnam era. There, there wasn't people living like with paralysis and other uh, amputees and stuff like there are today. So we're in a whole new day. And- yeah. Yeah, we are. Um, Longevity is here. And then also production should be uh, like, if you think about it, the way we have um, the tools we have now should make production a lot less um, in terms of like, you know, we account for inflation and everything else over the years. And, and then you look at the cost now, it just doesn't match, man. It's, it's insane where it's at. So like seeing what you're doing is really motivating um, and seeing your approach to it. You said something that I really stuck out for me, as you said, Hey, listen, I will, I want to see people copy the plans and do something similar. Probably not going to, because it requires real work, you know, but, um, that's the same, like in my realm, people say, Hey man, I want to do a podcast or I want a vlogger. I want to do social, like whatever, you know? And I'm like, listen, if you're part of the adaptive tribe, especially, and most I'll help most any like nonprofit or anything like that for free. And that's the same thing, man. I'm like, fuck it. If they can do it better and they can get the voice out better, then God damn it, go do it. Then go do it. And I will help you do it. Because like in the end, like there's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people that had spinal cord injuries in the past year. I hear it's rising because of like tech and driving and shit like that. I don't know. I just heard it's rising. The numbers are up higher. And like, there's a lot of people hurting and there's a lot of people born like me that are hurting and didn't know, you know, what the possibilities are. And the more we get that voice out and the more we share this community, the better, man. So that's what you're doing, man. And you're one of my um, favorite people I've talked to in forever. Like when I, when you posted that shit, I think I'm, I, I think I was there within like 20 minutes of like that post. I saw it and be more adaptive. And I'm like, that's, that's like exactly what I'm looking to to get out there and interview is this empowered person that's out there doing, making a big difference, man. So I appreciate you a ton. Yeah, man, this is my way of sticking it to all, all the people that told me this is the way the wheelchair is. We can't help you. I'm like, all right, so I'll sell the wheelchair for what it costs me to build it just about and put y'all out of business, man. No problem at all. Yeah. And that's what I'm that's what I'm doing, man, is I'm I'm trying to be the guy that c- comes into the game with something that's better than anybody else's, that's cheaper than anybody else's, because that's what we should be doing as a community, sticking together and making stuff, not not letting somebody live large off of us, dude. Yeah. You know, this is this isn't just because we want something. This is like we have to have this, this to have a quality of life. That is anywhere that, that gives us our sense of self. Like, dude, I'm not trying to make money off nobody. I'm just building a badass wheelchair because this is what I feel like I should be doing. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I feel you on that, man. I feel you for sure. And then for people that are listening, I talked to Ben Hunsinger like a few weeks ago about this, but I'm going to create a vlog that kind of highlights what you're doing with this chair, man. And I'm going to get some video out there so people can see. So it won't be just this podcast interview. You'll see more. And I don't get paid for any of this. In fact, I'd, I'd go fund me somebody for a chair. I'd help go fund it. I don't get paid for any of this shit. So anybody saying there's kickbacks or anything, not a, not a, not an ounce. So. Hell yeah, man. People can find me at SpartanWheelchariots.com, dude. I'm just a guy trying to make wheelchairs to help everybody out because I, I was that dude sitting there with nothing, no options. I didn't, I didn't want to go out there and start using other people's equipment that I didn't believe in, dude. Yep. And there was nothing else on the market like it. Nobody's nobody's front casters were big enough. The the outdoor chairs were too big to take anywhere. So I built something that you can take you can use it all day every day. I use mine. Mine is my only chair. Um durability wise, dude, I wouldn't be selling this things that they weren't perfect um if anybody's got a problem with their chair it's a it's a lifetime warranty dude i'll build you another one and send it out to you no problem no questions asked that's a hell of a way to build it that's a hell of a way to build it out especially the way some of you guys treat your chairs you know i'll be in a chair at some point and i'm like that's a hell of a warranty for me man and so like the point being is that uh yeah they, we beat up our chairs so like the fact that you'll back them like that that's that's pretty cool man it's like hell yeah, so, man. i hope we can spread the love man that people can see like all the shit you're doing and so uh we'll get you back to for sure like the fact that i want to sit down with you like we can peace out 
you know, we're hearing your story now, what you're doing and then what's the model of like approaching life this way? Like what is the Ben Hunsinger model? Cause these models are like really paying off. Like the people that we interview that really go into the details of how they're doing it, why they're doing it, how they're empowered. It's really helped. You know, those are some of the most downloaded interviews. So, um, I would love to get you back, you know, in the future somewhere before summer and we'll just hash that out. And then again, everybody listening, everybody watching now I'm saying watching everybody watching and listening. We're going to have a vlog come out in the next like month or so where we're going to highlight this chair. Ben's out there like grinding it out. He's in some pretty, uh, well, do you get crocodiles and alligators or whatever the hell down here? Uh, we've got plenty of alligators around here, man. You'll be seeing some of them uh, post coming up soon when I get out on my kayak and stuff, dude. Yeah, I saw, I saw some of them, man. I'm like, fuck that. I mean, I grew up in an area where, you know, like it got kind of crazy. We like play with copperheads. Seriously. We just didn't give a shit, you know, like, uh, that kind of stuff. But like gators was the one that got me. I get a little freaked out by those. So, um, what are you going to do, man? Nobody likes gators. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's the great outdoors down here where I live, man. There ain't, there is no accessibility. It's so uh, when you get out of the truck, dude, you're in, you're in the swamp. Um, and this wheelchair keeps up with me, man. It's um, uh, what if people want to hang out with you there, man? You you game, you game to let people come hang with you. You're gonna be nice to them. Yeah, brother. Yeah, y'all sure. come on, man. Yeah, what we got mean? a 900 acre lake where I live. We got um, O'Clockney River. The coast is on only about an hour and a half down. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, these are all places I go every day, man. It ain't this something like I got a um, crew of people helping me and stuff, dude. I do most of the stuff. So that's most of the stuff I don't have on film. Um, because it's just me out there. I'll snap pics every now and then, but, um, dude, it's a, it's a bad wheelchair, man. And it's, it really is. It goes wherever you want to go. Um, it stays up on top of anything loose. Um, it's just bad, man. I hope people check it out. They will. They'll check it out. Ben Hunsinger, thanks for being here, brother. Everything will be in the show notes, by the way, people. Ben's contact information, everything will be down there. So we'll get you linked up. Appreciate you, Scott. All right, brother. Remember, go to livingadaptive.com to find previous episodes, show notes, contacts for guests like this guest, links to social media accounts, and a bunch of other good stuff. So go there. Peace. Peace.